In 2017, Emmanuel Macron became the youngest French president in history. He did so without the backing of a political party. Winning 65% of the vote, he beat Marine Le Pen, the far-right candidate. In the process, he broke apart the status quo that had dominated French politics since the end of the Second World War. The Socialist Party and Les Républicains, which had alternated in power for decades, fell apart. Macron promised to move beyond the right-left political divide. His vision was one of an innovative and sustainable France within a strong European Union. But his presidency has not been an easy one. Massive social discontent with his policies and reforms and the coronavirus pandemic have pushed him into the mold he intended to break. So how did Macron come to power? And will he be able to keep it? To understand Macron's rise to power, we have to understand the disillusionment that took place with the French major political parties in 2017. To do that, we have to go back to the French presidential election of 2007. These are French voters, and their color represents their political affiliation. There are more voters at the center, but still a reasonable amount at the extremes. In 2007, they elected Nicolas Sarkozy, a center-right politician. His campaign slogan, work more to earn more, appealed to the middle class, but he also pushed a discourse on national identity. Voters from the center-left all the way to the fringes of the far right voted for him, but he soon faced a crisis. The American financial system is rocked to its foundation as top Wall Street institutions topple under a mountain of debt. When you step back for just a moment, consider the events uh, of the last few days, it is truly unbelievable. As the economy declined, Sarkozy was unable to hold his promises, and identity politics became the center point of his presidency, and his party moved to the right. This scared off voters of the center-left, and in the 2012 presidential election, they voted for the socialist candidate, François Hollande. 10 secondes avant le résultat. Vous êtes sur télé, il est 20h. François Hollande, selon notre estimation, a été élu président de la République avec 51,8% des voix. After Nicolas Sarkozy left his party, it continued to shift to the right and was divided by political infighting and scandals. The party was even accused of receiving money from Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi to finance the 2007 presidential election campaign. François Hollande was elected promising a radical agenda. He called himself the enemy of finance and promised a 75% tax rate for the rich. Je vais vous dire qui est mon adversaire, mon véritable adversaire. Il n'a pas de nom, pas de visage, pas de parti. Pourtant, il gouverne. Cet adversaire, c'est le monde de la finance. But when his measures failed to materialize, the left wing of his party rebelled against him. But he soon faced a very different crisis. As soon as they heard gunfire, these journalists who worked close to Charlie Hebdo's offices headed to the roof of their building. They witnessed the start of three days of unprecedented attacks on France. Terrorist attacks rocked his presidency, and his security measures saw him push for a law removing citizenship from terrorists with dual nationality lost him the support of his political party. The sluggish economy lost him the support of the French. With popularity dipping down to 4%, he couldn't stand for re-election, and his socialist party was dragged down with him in the opinion polls. That's where Emmanuel Macron comes in. He first started as an advisor to François Hollande, and later became economy minister in 2015. He was a popular media figure, promising young people that if they worked hard, they could be billionaires. He secretly plotted a run for the presidency, and left the socialist party in 2016 to fully focus on the campaign. He promised to govern past France's left-right political divide, balancing a right-wing economic program with progressive environmental and social policy. With the Socialist Party shifting further to the left in a primary, and Les Républicains continuing to shift to the right, the political middle ground was clear. Despite being relatively unknown, he defeated the mainstream political parties in the first round. In the second round, he soundly defeated Marine Le Pen, the far-right candidate, whose plans to leave the EU and the Euro scared away voters. Huge cheers greeted the first projected results. It's an extraordinary moment, it's exceptional. This will be a fresh start. I'm so happy because it's really a victory for Europe. It's great. Once elected, he built a political party from scratch. He took on politicians from the Socialist Party, 
and Les Républicains, dividing them further, and his progressive movement was rewarded with a large majority in the National Assembly. It went from looking like this in 2012 to this in 2017. Equipped with a mandate, he started to reform France, but his popularity quickly fell. Macron was accused of being out of touch with everyday French people. While Macron campaigned in the center, he mostly governed on the right, following a neoliberal agenda. Macron got rid of the French wealth tax, liberalized the economy, and reformed labor laws, leading to renewed confidence in the French economy. The opposition was quick to label him the president of the rich, and protests flared across France. Railway, pension, and policing reform all saw backlash, and a proposed fuel tax to finance the sustainability transition kickstarted the Gilets Jaunes movement. Gilets Jaunes, or yellow vests, refers to the neon vests that all French drivers must keep in their vehicles for breakdown emergencies. But now, it's come to symbolize a protest movement, frustrated with French President Emmanuel Macron, who they say is disconnected from the day-to-day -day economic difficulties suffered by workers and retirees. The left wing of his party progressively deserted him, and Macron has had to back down from many of his reforms, and the optimism of his campaign has faded. Three people have been killed in a knife attack in the French city of Nice. Les habitants sont toujours sous le choc de l'attaque au couteau de samedi qui a fait deux morts et cinq blessés. The French authorities have named the man who beheaded a teacher in a Paris suburb yesterday. Samuel Paty was a 47-year-old teacher of history and geography. Continuing terrorist attacks have led his government to adopt strict measures to prevent Islamic separatism, pushing Macron further to the right. Macron's government is now competing with Le Pen on security measures, and his recent anti-separatism law is straight from Marine Le Pen's playbook. One of his ministers even went out to call Le Pen as too soft on security issues. Madame Le Pen, dans sa stratégie de dédiabolisation, on revient à être quasiment un peu dans la mollesse. Je vous trouve, faut vous reprendre des vitamines. The coronavirus pandemic has damaged his economic reformer credentials as French debt has skyrocketed. But Macron is now making a bet that his security measures and the reopening of the economy will be able to win him the votes of the French. Yet his shift to the right still threatens to undermine his success. He has pushed away the voters of the center-left who brought him into power in 2017, hoping to replace them with the right-wing voters who support his neoliberal and security agenda. But he is now openly competing with what is left of Les Républicains and Marine Le Pen, which may prove challenging. Since her election defeat in 2017, Marine Le Pen has modernized and rebranded her party. It dropped some of the more controversial proposals, including those for Frexit and abandoning the euro. Success in local and regional elections has given her party a chance to prove it can rule, and the continued terrorist attacks in France, social discontent, and Macron's mismanagement of the coronavirus pandemic have played into her hands. Ce que je veux dire, c'est que ils n'ont eu comme outil que le confinement. On confine, on déconfine, on reconfine, on déconfine. Macron's shift to the right has meant that she appears less radical and more eligible, with more voters now considering to vote for a Rassemblement National. On the other side of the political spectrum. Left-wing parties, including remainders of the Socialist Party, are considering an alliance. Macron faces a threat coming from the left, which may deprive him of votes from the center. If the election was held today, he would likely win, but with a much smaller margin than in his 2017 success. At stake is not only his vision for France, but also that for Europe. Macron is one of the most vocal supporters of further European integration, calling for European strategic autonomy, common debt, and a common defense force. Marine Le Pen, while no longer looking to exit the EU, is looking to change it to fit her vision of a Europe of nation states. Macron has managed to change French politics, but now he must prove that the alternative he has created can stand the test of time. This was Into Europe. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest updates and analysis on European news.